few moments ago, I, um, I woke from a fitful sleep, um, having, um, having finally, uh, managed to get a little more rest, uh, being in a, a upset state of mind at seeing, um, um, the, the, the bombing of, of the, uh, Rafa refugee camp. Um, and, uh, video of this is worse than any horror film I've seen. Babies screaming, being burned alive. And I woke, uh, with these words, th uh, that I put in the subject line here. In mind, political power grows from the barrel of a gun. Um, um, I encourage you uh, to read the writings of Mao Zedong, because I think uh, a lot of the people who would see this, who will eventually uh, see this, um, would not differ with that statement. And yet, in almost every important respect, um, not least of which of these is they are, they are not trying to build in themselves a, a worldview more similar to that of Mao Zedong than, say, the Western ruling elites who would oppose a person like that today and did in their time. Um, um, you have to educate yourself in revolutionary thought and scientific socialist thought um, uh, first and foremost uh, before you could even begin. Um, uh, to be uh, an organizer of, um, of the kind that would, say, stop the ruling elites from um, com uh, continuing to commit massacre after massacre along the lines of, of Rafa in not just in Palestine, but everywhere. Everywhere. You're next. Um, this conversation is going to mostly... Uh, center on advanced computing, although not really, and um, um, uh, one th one thing that I've um, uh, experienced in my life that you might not be surprised if you know uh, that much about me, um, but for a uh, former uh, community college professor. Um, it wouldn't necessarily uh, be a given that I would have experienced that, but I've lived in a tent. And um, uh, so uh, uh, seeing uh, uh, other refugees um, who were told that they should do the right thing move to this area, uh, stay safe by going to the safe zone, living in a tent because all of the homes have been destroyed by, I would argue, intentional uh, planning. S so um, th there's a man who started um, <clears throat> an AI um, defense firm uh, relatively recently, named Palmer Lucky. Uh, he's someone who um, um, is most famous for being a, um, a relatively early stage a developer of the uh, virtual reality technology that's become more commonplace uh, today. Um, uh, but you could say uh, the same of a company that's been doing that f this for a number of other years, Palantir. Uh, and you could say this um, of a hundred uh, defense firms uh, with um, uh, access to advanced computing um, in specifically the United States, the UK, and Israel, um, uh, that um, these are not people who would ever, um, uh, who have ever had this experience of living in a tent. Uh, the people who have access to this um, um, uh, dubious advanced computing power, um, 
and uh, it is um, uh, what what do these people have in common? What does what is Palantir really um, uh, the tip of the spear of in things like this? This this um, uh, this um, two hundred thousand person murder in over the last seven months. It's not 40,000. They, they murdered all of the people that were keeping track of how many people died. Um, and the um, uh, ruling elite-aligned mainstream media has been repeating this lie that it's 40,000 people that have died. But it's been 40,000 people since last year, right? Yet there are massacres going on a daily basis. There's a mass starvation going on a daily basis. So it's not 40,000 people. It's a quarter of a million people. They're just lying to you, just in the way that they're lying about other cullings, like the coronavirus outbreaks. Um, um, and um, by and large, most of you are going along with it, again, because you are not Mao Zedong. Because you think that you are Mao Zedong, but you are more aligned with um, someone like Palmer Lucky. You are more aligned with that way of thinking. Um, and that's a fundamental, fundamental problem. Um, I, I would call um, uh, what uh, the West is doing as, as a new stage of controlled chaos. And I would contextualize that um, specifically as a... Uh, uh, elites who are fearful of a global proletariat united by advanced computing. So why I would say that we are all, uh, whether we are being called um, in um, the most violent way, like the people, revolutionary uh, uh, people of Palestine, or uh, called at a, a slower pace by coronavirus or other social murders, um, um, it is because these elites are afraid of us. Um, and why are they more afraid of us uh, now than before? Because of this emergence of advanced computing power, in my view. Um, we could view ourselves as um, uh, being in a similar position to uh, the people of Argentina living um, in 1971, 1972, 1973, under Salvador Allende, as uh, that country was building uh, Cybersyn, an advanced uh, computing uh, planned economy um, that could well have very could very well have um, changed the economic system um, in the years to follow in South America, had um, a U.S. backed and um, and Western fascism backed uh, forces and not invaded that country and destroyed uh, that incipient system. Um, and um, um, I see every day uh, people who are essentially at the vanguard um, of um, of uh, this uh, response of the global proletariat to, the violence of the ruling elite, and let's say specifically um, um, uh, Westerners um, who would support um, organizations like the Palestine Liberation Front, um, a, a communist organization part of the um, Al-Aqsa Flood Alliance, um, which is commonly referred to by the shorthand Hamas, which is of course... Um, um, not a good shorthand to use because it's the shorthand uh, that the media uses um, uh, in in a violently dismissive and reductive way. Um, but nevertheless, I see um, uh, people who um, would more or less be in the revolutionary uh, uh, vanguard uh, every day. Talk also one of the, some of them uh, talking about um, AI. As um, as being problematic and something 
uh, that should be banned. And I would tend to support that statement. Um, but imagine uh, that those people were saying this of the gun itself. Political power, power grows from the barrel of a gun. Advanced computing is a more revolutionary tool in our time um, um, than, uh, than the firearm. Um, imagine that they were saying this of the gun. Um, um, other revolutionaries uh, would laugh them off the stage. Um, but, but they are uh, saying it of, of advanced computing. And it's not that um, um, in uh, quarter two of 2024, where we are now, um, um, AI is not um, uh, problematic. Um, it uses a lot of water resources far more um, uh, than it should than is justified in the way that it's being used. Um, and um, its its environmental impact overall is highly problematic. Its um, usages, really is characterized by it being more or less um, a thing of these some hundreds of military contractors, companies like Google um, and Microsoft really are also among those military contractors, of course. Um, uh, so it is, it is not a thing of the people. Uh, but uh, we can um, uh, develop these things in the ways that I have described many times in this channel um, um, uh, to be uh, liberating forces. Um, uh, and I have described that mostly in the context of uh, what I've called the AI agentic class, uh, the building of a, um, a, a human um, advanced computing, uh, automated advanced computing hybrid network um, uh, that um, uh, could be used, should be used right now uh, to... Um, um, uh, uh, to present a challenge al along the lines of what uh, Mao Zedong and company did in the 1940s um, in China, we can um, uh, we can dismantle um, the ecocidal military industrial complex of the United States and uh, the uh, North Atlantic and Western powers. Uh, we c we can do that and and. Um, uh, the way that I've described uh, this is uh, by um, um, using a modified large language model uh, that is open source and uh, that are um, increasingly agentic, um, able to uh, plan and uh, respond in real time more, somewhat more in the way that a thoughtful person uh, would respond than um, a limited digital assistant along the lines of chat GPT um, 4.0, let's say, or your impressions of um, uh, Siri or Alexa um, would not be, you would not have the impression that these are agentic. Uh, but um, in this world today, there are things um, which if you were to interact with them, uh, your impression would not be of the impression that you have of Siri or Alexa. But if, insofar as uh, work is concerned, your impression would be that of a fellow comrade. It's not to say we should talk about artificial personhood. It's to say that this is the now, in 2024, the most powerful revolutionary tool that has ever existed. And um, um, in the hands of an individual, it doesn't mean very much. It might allow you to change your lifestyle somewhat. That's not significant on a dying planet. Um, however, the, um, uh, the point is that um, um, some hundreds of thousands even of people um, with um, AI agents connected to one another um, uh, could uh, spearhead uh, with relatively little work on the part of the individual users, the hosts of um, the LLM on their GPUs um, uh, could nevertheless spearhead uh, projects 
um, um, dramatically more sophisticated uh, than those hundreds of thousands of people uh, could undertake, even working full time together in in some way. Um, and um, um, this is a basis for um, um, scientific socialist superintelligence in 2024, in 2025, certainly. Um, and I don't see people um, who are at the edge of being um, um, someone like Mao Zedong, at the edge of being someone uh, to challenge um, uh, fascist power, as they correctly must in this time. Um, uh, saying this about ad ad advanced computing, if anything, they're saying the opposite. Uh, they're saying that um, um, it should be done away with. And the reasons that they're giving, of course, are correct. Um, it is a, a thing captured by uh, the ruling elites. Let me contextualize this for people, because even maybe some of the people that I've tagged in this video um, um, uh, don't... Um, um, necessarily that have haven't had the time or energy uh, uh, to to game all of this out um, today in Pyongyang or Beijing um, um, the capitals of nations which have in their constitution um, that they will support a humane and sustainable economic system that includes the necessary for this uh, the abolition of finance capital and private wealth. Uh, these are also cities that are known uh, to have a, um, a fair number or a large, large number of computer users of the kind that I've described um, who could be in this network. So much so that you could say some millions of people um, in one or both of those cities uh, could be within weeks or months, um, operating in the way that I've described, um, 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 under uh, the banner of a nation state um, or um, an, in, an internationalist organization uh, functioning um, within the limitations of a present day nation state, um, I would argue, and this is not generally agreed upon, that um, present day China is in, is internationalist in its uh, mandate in the way that the Soviet Union was, and so um, should not be described only as a nation state in the way that um, fascist country like the United States would be described as only a nation state. Um, and um, um, uh, if that frightens you, uh, the idea of some millions of people in Beijing um, uh, uh, aligning into a, a super intelligent force. Um, um, and I, and I would argue that that, um, um, outcome is why someone like Palmer Lucky, um, or Peter Thiel, or all of, um, the, uh, less visible individuals, uh, working in these, um, military contractors, be they, devils like Elbit Systems or Boeing or people e equally uh, complicit who are some, for some reason giving, given a pass, uh, those like Google or Microsoft, um, um, all of the chaos that they are unleashing upon this world, and they are the ones unleashing that chaos, those are the people responsible uh, for Rafa, uh, Palantir, um, and people like this planned this entire thing. Uh, these 200,000 people, um, uh, uh, these 200,000 murders um, in Gaza were planned in advance by those people specifically. Um, and by people uh, like uh, uh, political uh, uh, forces, Joe Biden in the United States. None of this would be happening without uh, their intentional uh, uh, planning of it. And um, um, that is important to say um, because uh, it's not a rogue actor. It's not 
just Bibi Netanyahu and Gallant um, and Ben Gvir, um, um, who are responsible uh, for this. It's in the entire uh, fascist West. And um, the reason that they are doing this, and not uh, the, the lo a logical person, um, even a person not, say, the 21st century equivalent of Mao Zedong, if they saw um, uh, that um, advanced computing could become um, a revolutionary and liberatory force um, connecting millions of people in a place like Beijing uh, tomorrow, uh, they would also uh, try and build such a thing. They would also become liberators. If the former um, enslaver um, is no longer in a position to be an enslaver, um, one thing that he could do would be to change his position, um, uh, the European fascist, and cease to be a fascist, and build that, um, uh, and, and uh, get ahead of the thing, and build that uh, liberatory force. And that is ultimately uh, what uh, the techno-fascists of today will do, because they will have no choice, and they'll be um, uh, lauded as heroes, but I don't think that that will um, happen for another 15 or 20 years. Um, and they, would, they will not be the heroes um, um, in that situation, in the way that um, uh, working people um, who have fought uh, for liberation, and particularly those in marginalized groups, the indigenous people of the world, um, um, who they have done great violence to in the past and today, will continue to do so as long as they can. Um, it's a situ that situation specifically would be analogous to uh, the Abraham Lincoln. Right? Abraham Lincoln was not the great emancipator. Um, he was a racist, um, the head of uh, a fascist organization in, in an inter-imperialist war between North and South in the U.S. Civil War. Um, and um, um, he would have, just as he had plans to expel all African Americans from the North American continent, from the United States, um, um, uh, to preserve the Union. This is not a great emancipator. Uh, that it's an act of genocide to expel all of the people, um, um, and um, but ultimately he had no choice uh, but to play this role of emancipator, and that is analogous to what I expect uh, will happen with um, uh, the the uh, the uh, the technologist um, in the course of the next few years. Uh, they will be forced by folks like you and I the people who are making the effort, trying to be the 21st century Mao Zedong, at least trying to um, have that level of understanding, or at least, uh, you know, the people that I mentioned would rightly be called, in rate, perhaps many of the people that I mentioned would be more correctly called uh, enraged social democrats, um, now aligned with revolutionary liberation, uh, but not possessing a genuine understanding of uh, a revolutionary thought or scientific socialist thought. Uh, so I gave two examples on this show. Um, uh, let's say a Paris Marx, a technologist along those lines, um, is someone I've talked about. Lauren McKenzie I talked about as someone who has specifically denounced advanced computing in, in recent days. And she's... Um, uh, t more of a Twitter personality. Another example would be Bree Newsom Bass, um, um, who is um, more of, of a revolutionary figure than those other two, um, by virtue of being a North American um, um, a, a person who whose ancestors were enslaved, a person of African descent whose ancestors uh, were enslaved. And, um, and a person who has a richer understanding of these things than those other two, I would argue, besides, person closer to Mao Zedong 
and an enraged social democrat, but nevertheless a person who in recent days um, has described advanced computing not in terms of that I've described as political power growing from the barrel of gun, not as the most powerful revolutionary tool, but a thing that should be dismissed, averred, downgraded in your thinking, made illegal. And if a push um, were, were made uh, to make advanced computing completely illegal, um, LLMs, chatbots, chat GPT, completely illegal tomorrow, uh, by such people, I would support it. But I would also be saying this at every step of the way, um, uh, uh, that um, it needs to become a force that um, on the world stage that is open source and that is used in in this manner. Um, um, the AI agentic class or agent to build the AI agentic class or agent target. Because this is a transformative uh, moment. And to um, um, uh, dismiss advanced technology as not being a part of that transformative moment is to lose that war. Um, and and someone, I, even a person um, as good as Comrade Bree, um, um, again, I would say um, respectfully that they have not um, game game that out um, in the way that they should. Um, and so um, I've described this in terms of an AI proletariat, um, which is regarded as the specter, uh, oft repeated specter of communism. Of course, those were uh, ironic words coming from uh, uh, Comrade Marx. Um, uh, but um, that a essential attitude is the attitude of the ruling elites, and I would argue it's a driving force behind uh, much of this uh, seemingly random chaos, which will increase in the years uh, 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 to come. And um, as I said, in, if I my best guess would be that it might then decrease in another ten or fifteen years uh, when um, um, people like the Peter Thiels and Paul Marluckis. Uh, transition more into that Lincoln emancipator uh, role. Um, um, uh, but um, all of us, irrespective of whether we um, would support uh, a Beijing agentariat, let's say, um, or be frightened by it, most of you in the West, even, I think, uh, um, uh, people who uh, recognize the need to on some level, recognize the need to um, remove finance capital from the equation, the essential, the most essential uh, notion for a real socialist, not um, a reformer. Um, um, are would, most of those people when would would be triggered by the idea of of this uh, a Beijing collective? They would see that as a, some kind of competitor against their nation. Um, and um, that is absolutely the wrong way to look at it. But nevertheless, it should be the conversation, in my view, uh, or it's preferable to what's happening now, where we're just accepting the chaos, uh, but not um, uh, 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 analyzing uh, that in the way that it uh, necessarily needs to be analyzed, just responding um, uh, to problems and not really even responding in a way that is ending the problems, right? Um, just yelling, yelling into the void. Um, and um, um, uh, so um, um, that bad analysis of, um, uh, let's say, let's say a Jackson Hinkle. Uh, Jackson Hinkle is, uh, would rightly be called um, a potential uh, at the top of the list of America's next Mussolini. And I say next Mussolini because America did have a Mussolini. Fred Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, had much more in common with Mussolini than any, any socialist. He was not trying to abolish finance capital. Um, he was doing the opposite, preserving finance capital by um, um, killing a lot of people, but also having some uh, structural reforms to the economic system. Um, 
uh, that um, prevented a genuine revolution from happening in that time. Uh, the most counter-revolutionary force uh, on 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 uh, the U.S. stage in history, arguably, um, and um, um, the, so Jackson Hinkle. Uh, to, let's imagine Jack, Jackson Hinkle has his uh, millions of followers across platforms um, uh, fixated, and uh, so becomes um, um, an AI populist. Uh, saying what I've just said, uh, that Beijing is going to build an agent target, which could and should happen, um, and that the only way that we can um, be in a position to remain competitive as a nation um, uh, would be to um, uh, build that thing as well. Um, um, even though that would be... Um, 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 the wrong thing to do relative uh, to the genuine revolutionary, it would still be better, I would argue, than um, what's happening today where we are just um, uh, yelling into the void about things that we uh, cannot control, horror after horror. Um, uh, but, of course, it should never be argued uh, that someone uh, should take a populist um, or a social chauvinist uh, strategy, um, only um, that uh, that analogy could perhaps serve uh, uh, to uh, focus us on doing the genuinely um, liberatory thing um, of a similar kind. Um, uh, the the um, the strategy um, of the ruling elites is not one of direct. Uh, confrontation. Again, I'll ex give an example of uh, J. Edgar of the 20th century. J. Edgar Hoover um, um, uh, waged war domestically in this thing, the FBI, which most Americans have the view of the FBI as guys who all wear similar suits and glasses, and um, they're really good doing good work or something, um, which is an idiotic view because this thing would not exist except as effectively a domestic terror organization uh, targeting uh, specific uh, uh, groups of people. At first, um, any um, uh, kind of insurgent, labor groups and anarchists, um, and then increasingly uh, Native American and African American groups um, uh, through not just things like COINTELPRO, but ongoing programs of that kind and um, mass violence against um, any potentially uh, transformative entity or individual. Um, and um, 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 uh, so the point was that um, this was something that was done um, in an openly violent way um, uh, for the better part of a half a century um, by uh, people like J. Edgar Hoover. At the, more or less at the time of J. Edgar Hoover's death, um, the mandate switched uh, from um, open violence and warfare, uh, which was inspiring um, uh, the insurgent, the person on the right side of history, more aligned with Mao Zedong than J. Edgar Hoover, uh, uh, to... Um, uh, to greater resistance. So the mandate then switched uh, to social murder and um, undermining of organizations uh, without, um, say, just um, um, murdering um, Fred Hampton in his bed um, and saying, and, 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 and thus inspiring potentially a thousand more Fred Hamptons. Um, but the, the system is able to still murder Fred Hampton in his bed, um, just not with a gun, but with social murder and um, other uh, more devious uh, forms of, uh, of violence. Um, and um, uh, so that, rep that um, um, assertion about this uh, chaotic global landscape um, represented at this precise moment um, by... Um, uh, the Gaza genocide, let's say, 
um, but this uh, chaotic global landscape generally uh, is a, a avoidance of that direct confrontation um, uh, that was in the 20th century um, uh, uh, pushing um, uh, this vanguard forward. Um, um, and um, um, so this can take a lot of other forms. Um, I mentioned um, this pandemic type effect um, as being one, and um, um, there is no analysis. You can dismiss this word pandemic, but there's no analysis of um, of a country that does not that intentionally does not have a public health service or adequate responses at every step, and the country that is. Um, arguably the only country that could create a thing with this and kind of gain a function uh, type effects, a, a path of pathogens uh, like that, um, and unleash it upon people uh, in this way, the extent to which that is truly done, there is nevertheless no sense that could be reasonably asserted in, in which it's not been done, uh, because, you know, what happened in 2020, the Alex Jones... The usual um, suspects of CIA assets were out in the streets before coronavirus had even uh, killed more than one or two people in North America, as far as we know, uh, uh, saying um, uh, we can't have ever have masks, right? Or, and, uh, or you have the narrative of vaccines over uh, masks or over a public health service. You would be, so you would be lambasted in 2021 uh, for saying anything about a public health service or anything about masks um, um, by people who would just assert that vaccines were going to save you. And that vaccine, of course, was not intended uh, to save you. It was intended uh, to uh, manufacture consent for this ongoing uh, culling. Um, uh, so whether, whether you um, agree with the, this concept of a full pandemic. There's not a reasonable sense in which you can dismiss the concept entirely. Um, um, and, but um, a similar, uh, uh, similar uh, uh, chaotic forms of manipulation of social media algorithms uh, to, um, um, to have the same effect as murdering Fred Hampton in his bed. Um, uh, uh, to destroy... Um, any organizing before it could um, uh, become a phenomena. Um, other uh, exacerbation of um, uh, of social situations by uh, these uh, techno fascists, um, um, uh, uh, destabilizing um, any place outside. Uh, increasingly, as f the further they deviate from the imperial core, destabilizing them even more, the Jakarta method uh, sort of thing, um, um, where the United States, you should read uh, the book, uh, The Jakarta Method. It's one of the best books uh, written on empire in recent years. Um, uh, but the idea um, is that um, uh, the empire um, will murder people in the many millions um, in the global south uh, to prevent a movement for a humane and sustainable economic system in their region, um, um, in in violence um, far worse or as bad as that uh, that was undertaken by the COINTELPRO type folks that's since been um, 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 viewed as not bad by these people, but merely impractical um, because. It, it will uh, create gr a greater insurgency. So they managed to uh, find other ways to break the back of the insurgency. Um, uh, but they don't care about that uh, the further you are from the Imperial core, uh, because um, uh, they're not at, at risk uh, by an, insurg uh, an increasing insurgency um, in another country in the same way. They can, they can, manage, they can manage that. And uh, the Jakarta method is, um, if you haven't read it, um, like, what are you doing? Um, I'll put a link uh, to an audiobook uh, for that in here. If you're, if you're not able to read um, um, a tremendous amount of theory, um, uh, scientific uh, works of revolutionary and scientific socialist thought, I understand that. 
the system is arranged in such a way um, uh, that um, you're forced uh, to work constantly and not uh, become um, um, this vanguard. Um, uh, But uh, you still have a duty uh, to try uh, to do that. So one way that you can do that is to uh, um, put a speaker in your ear when you're required to do something else and listen to those uh, works. Uh, so I would, uh, this is why um, I frequently encourage people to listen to audiobooks. It's not because it's my own exclusive way of um, um, uh, doing this, but um, although I do it quite a lot, um, but it's um, because it's something that um, mitigates uh, this force of um, uh, the, effectively this uh, neoliberal and Powell ma- memorandum uh, type system. Another uh, uh, tremendously influential, influential uh, far right uh, work, at least among the empire managers, um, is uh, the Powell memorandum, which uh, bis- which is basically a guidebook. Uh, for um, wage enslavement um, in North America. And it's um, one document, more than almost any, that represented the shift from capitalism of the 20th century, which was not sustainable at all, which was violent in all of these ways, which had fascists like J. Edgar Hoover and so many others, no less a fascistic system than the system of today, uh, but one that... um, um, but this shift to neoliberalism um, um, was basically a shift uh, to widespread wage slavery beyond that of um, 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 uh, that experienced, w- at least within um, uh, the European American uh, working class. Uh, the, um, the negation of uh, the Keynesian bargain uh, where uh, people... Uh, these beneficiaries of empire, uh, the North American white working class, let's say, um, were, or um, the European working class, were offered certain benefits, uh, public health service in the case of the UK, um, um, uh, certain uh, socialized benefits or basic protections um, more consistent um, with the socialist country if they would uphold private wealth ge- and empire generally. And um, uh, they were seen as not doing that, being in breach of that agreement, the Keynesian bargain agreement, um, in, by the 1970s, uh, because basically because of Vietnam, and a huge international um, uh, pushback to empire um, by the resistors of the Vietnam War. Um, um, and, uh, so it was determined that the Keynesian bargain, uh, must be broken. And that's what neoliberalism effectively represents. Um, and, um, um, we, again, as I said, uh, throughout this show, uh, the, um, uh, the force, uh, the forces of the ruling elites to prevent, uh, the formation of an AI agentic class, and a unified proletariat uh, that is able to use this most powerful tool that has ever existed, um, um, semi-autonomous, advanced, semi-autonomous advanced computing with human-like capabilities in many areas today, um, um, uh, to, to organize uh, this new vanguard. Um, and we must do that. Um, um, and, um, uh, so again, I won't say, I should not say, uh, just as I did not say that, um, um, the, uh, that Jackson Hinkle, um, being, um, uh, 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 technocratic demagogue example becoming, he is not that, but becoming that, uh, would be worse than the situation today. It would be bad. It would not be worse than the situation today. Uh, similarly, I would not, not say that those in the vanguard who denounce AI um, um, as, a, um, um, as a tool of oppression, which it is, or as an unsustainable product uh, today, which it is, are wrong. Only that um, um, 
um, they run the risk of doing the thing uh, that is done so much um, in the blogosphere, um, uh, which is um, being an unwitting tool of the ruling elites. The ruling elites are completely amorphous. They don't, um, in any given moment in time, ever have an ideology. Uh, so you will have um, someone like a CIA cutout, arguably like Jackson Hinkle, uh, being put into a position to, say, uh, become that AI demagogue to even do something like drive um, a legitimate, um, um, a more legitimate um, a push for something like the agent Ariet in a kind of neo-arms race uh, with Beijing, who might legitimately do it, or Pyongyang, who might legitimately do it. Um, uh, so they sometimes will even um, kind of do the right thing. Always, of course, in the interest of either empire or finance capital. Um, and um, um, uh, so when, when you uh, focus on um, any given single issue, you might be almost completely correct in your analysis of it, as these um, AI doomers that I mentioned um, or a hundred others uh, that we could identify and mention, um, uh, people who would generally be on the right history, right side of history, um, uh, but I, who are, I would say are as wrong, almost as wrong as they could possibly be on this subject, um, even though they are correct in saying that um, environmental impact is significant. The environmental impact of um, that thing from which a political p power grows um, the barrel of a gun, that its environmental impact is significant. Uh, so you could concern troll um, the uh, freedom fighter by saying, oh, you have a gun in your hand. Don't you know that that's an unsustainable practice? Um, and thus um, uh, deny the right of the insurgency to exist at all. And I would argue that that's what um, this... Uh, a leftist AI doomer, because they are not necessarily scientific socialists. Uh, they are people who are nevertheless inflamed, enraged, correctly, um, uh, making them um, potentially revolutionary force, and some of them are scientific socialists. Uh, scientific socialists do differ on the subject. Not all of them are revolutionary cybernetic socialists, understanding uh, that advanced computing is the most powerful tool that has ever existed. Um, uh, you wouldn't advocate for the disarmament of impress, oppressed groups fighting for freedom if you're a genuine, um, a genuine uh, ally, um, and you should not advocate for um, um, this most powerful revolutionary tool um, uh, to be abolished either, except that um, the pigs who control these sectors now uh, need to be driven into the sea. That goes without saying. Uh, but uh, these things should be open sourced and um, made a part of the people's struggle. And uh, by open sourcing them, we could build this thing tomorrow. This, say, million person um, 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 semi autonomous AI network that could exist in Beijing uh, tomorrow. Um, uh, that could easily exist in a more decentralized uh, way, and that might be the more likely outcome. It might be more likely uh, that this thing that I've done, uh, this show on many times, building the agent target, uh, is the more likely outcome than it um, being centered um, and sanctioned um, uh, by um, uh, the Democratic Republic of Korea or uh, the People's Republic of China or any other nation. Um, um, I don't necessarily think that the, um, um, the model that I've described, uh, multi-agent systems arra arrayed around a decentralized autonomous organization, uh, that is fundamentally an anarcho-syndicalist project. I'm not an anarcho-syndicalist. I'm a, a supporter of state socialism. Um, uh, but uh, nevertheless... <laughs> Uh, we have to build a thing that can stop uh, the United States military industrial complex, the world's worst polluter, who only protects other super polluters and imperial forces of a most egregious kind, 
um, uh, from killing this species within five years. After five years, our, there it will be a certainty that there will be a hundred um, um, hundreds of millions and billions of deaths caused by climate change, potentially the entire species, if we do not do this necessary work of ending Western fascism, particularly the military-industrial complexes. Um, um, uh, so, um, while I would like to be in a position uh, to do that in the context of um, Beijing, uh, build this uh, thing that's strong enough to fight that, um, uh, this uh, multi-agent system of, uh, uh, of a scale that I've described as the agent Harriet, I am not in that position. I am in a position to do this thing that is not preferable, in my view, the um, more anarcho-syndicalist thing. Um, um, and so that is what I have uh, tried uh, to articulate. Um, um, I said that the uh, importance of open source is the one thing in the revolutionary imagination that we could describe as a blonde spot specific to this thing. Um, um, uh, people in the vanguard never talk about open source um, technology, and they should because this is the most powerful revolutionary tool in history. So um, uh, the fascist West strategy of chaos, as I've described here, and, um, is a desperate attempt uh, and that will go on for another 15 or 20 years uh, to maintain this uh, crumbling power structure. Um, but by recognizing uh, the truly transformative potential of advanced computing for collective liberation and fostering a genuine international collaboration, not this uh, piss poor thing that passes for international collaboration, but a genuine internationalist movement, uh, we can create a future uh, where um, so called AI. Um, advanced computing empowers um, the working class um, uh, to such a degree that we are able to stop capitalism's climate apocalypse and not allow the ruling elites to cull not just people in Rafa, but many more billions besides. Um, and the, so the time to organate, organize and uh, uh, forge uh, this um, AI agentic cla class, uh, this advanced uh, computing proletariat in partnership uh, with these auto uh, incredible autonomous things which did not exist a few years ago, um, the, the time is now, uh, before the tools of revolution are locked away, or before uh, the level of chaos increases um, uh, uh, to such a point uh, where options are dramatically limited. Um, the future depends on our ability um, to be the 21st century Mao Zedong, uh, to reclaim this um, uh, 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 cybernetic superpower of that could have easily emerged, as I said, in 1971, 1972, 1973, um, in uh, Ch Allende's Chile. Uh, we must become those things and uh, forge a future of real stability and real prosperity, which only can be done uh, through the abolition of finance, capital, and empire. And all of that is a possibility within that five-year time frame if we recognize that political power grows from the barrel of a gun. And for the purpose of this analogy, that includes advanced uh, computing, the most powerful revolutionary tool that has ever existed. Thank you.